Hi and welcome to this tutorial. Here I'm going to show you how to run macros in Excel from your data validation drop down menus. Now if you'd like to get the workbook you see here go to teachexcel.com and you can download it there. So in this tutorial what I'm going to do is very quickly go over the steps of adding a data validation drop down menu and then I'm going to show you the macro that you need in order to run another macro or any other macro or VBA code. Now I'm not going to go too in depth into the VBA code in this tutorial. I'll do that in a VBA specific tutorial for doing this. Also if you want to get an in-depth explanation of how to do the drop down menus check out the data validation one and two tutorials. So let's go ahead and begin with creating the drop down menus. Now what I have here is a list of the macros I like to run. You can call them whatever you want. It does not matter. But this is what I'm going to use to fill my drop down menu. I kept it all in the same worksheet to keep it a little bit easier for this tutorial. So what I want to do is go ahead and create the drop down menu. So select the desired cell and now let's go to the data validation window. Remember, you can get there from any version with Alt plus D plus L. Or if you're in Excel 2007, go to the data tab, data tools and click data validation. Then you'll see this window open up. It's the same window that you get to if you do Alt DL. What you want to do is in the allow box, click the drop down arrow and select list. Make sure you have in cell drop down checked or the box next to that checked. Then click in the source bar. I'm going to click this button. You do not have to. Then go ahead and select your data to create the drop down menu. All this button does, by the way, is shrink the window so it's easier to select cells. So once you've done that, go ahead and click OK and you've got your drop down menu. Mine's a little bit off the screen, so I'm going to go ahead and add a column. And as you've noticed, I colored my cell yellow simply because when you click off of the drop down cell, cell with the drop down menu, you won't know that it's a drop down menu unless you color it. So now we've got the drop down menu, right? You can put everything in it or delete it if you want, and it has data validation. Now let's go ahead and hook the macros up to this cell so that we can get these messages running. All right, now the first thing that we need to do is let me fill in some shortcuts down here. All right, so data validation here and VBA window right here, Alt plus F11. Let's go to the VBA window right now, so Alt F11. Now there, I'm going to go ahead and close this real quick. We'll open it back up in a second. You will see something like this. Locate the worksheet that you're working in. You're going to see the name of your worksheet listed right here. I've got a data validation six and then whatever else. So locate that, then go down to where it says this workbook. Double click that and here we go. This is the macro that we need. It's going to allow us to run whatever code we want based on what we put in the drop down menu. Now there are a few parts to it. I'm going to go over those right now. The most important thing is you have to put it in this workbook. You cannot put it in a module. That's because we need it to run or to check the cell every time the workbook changes. Now that leads me to the other thing, other or the second most important thing. In the workbook, you need to make sure that this little menu right here on the left says workbook. You can click click the drop down arrow and select workbook. The alternative is where it says general, but we want workbook. Then go to the next drop down menu on the right, click that, make sure you select sheet change. Now if you just copy and paste this macro, which is going to be on teachexcel.com, you don't need to worry about that. But if you're doing it by hand, make sure the left drop down menu says workbook and the right drop down menu says sheet change. Now the left one means it's going to work for the entire workbook. That's why we want it to say workbook. On the right, sheet change means that it's going to be enacted or this macro will be run every time something on the worksheet changes. And since we're going to be changing the values in the drop down menu, we want to run a macro every time that changes. Now, moving on from that, remember that's the most important part. The rest of this macro just checks what's in the cell. I have created a very basic macro. Um, there's really not much validation. You're going to want to put validation and checks in yours, but this is pretty basic. I've got a select case and 
then I've got what it's going to look for. All this means is, well, let me just go through. So you want to type select case, space, then to the right of select case, you want to input what you want to check. I want to check cell A2, because if I hit Alt F11, go back to the worksheet, this was in cell A2. It's not in cell A2 anymore because I deleted it, or I added a column right here, so now it's in cell B2. But the point is, that should be the cell with the drop down menu. So let me go ahead and actually change it since I added a column, B2. I have it in the range property basically or method. So range B2. Keep this format the same. Just type range, open parentheses, quotation mark, the location of the cell you want to check, close quote, close parentheses. Next is case. After you type case, type what you want to check for in cell B2. Well, if cell B2, my drop down menu, remember, says message 1, then I want to run this macro code right here. Message box, this is your message 1 macro. Now, you can put a bunch of spaces in here, do whatever you want, and have tons of code in here. It's all up to you. The important part is to remember that every case statement is going to check something. So case, if message 1 is in cell B2, run this code. Then we got a second case. If message 2, this text, is in cell B2, run this code. And it goes on. You don't have to worry about knowing the end of the case, right? Because this is the first case. And it knows the second case is here because of the syntax case. Now, once you're done with all of your cases, so to speak, you want to type end select. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Note that um, this is uh, essentially an easier to use version of the if then statement. So you could do a bunch of if statements to check for all of this. I use the select case method. So I'm sure that was all really complicated and there's really not too much of a reason to learn this unless you want to um, because you can just go ahead and copy it from teachexcel.com. So I recommend you go ahead and copy it and just put it in your workbook and change it as you need to. Remember you just change this part, leave the syntax, everything else the same. Alright, so let's go ahead and run this and see what is actually going to happen. Remember the only thing you really need to change is this right here to make sure it points to the cell with the drop down menu and then adjust the macro code as needed. So Alt F11 to get back to the worksheet. Now let's go ahead and select message 1. This is your message 1 macro. Okay. This is your message 2 macro. Not bad. So I think that's pretty cool. You can get a macro to run based on what you put in here. And you don't have to have every selection run a macro. And to be quite honest with you, you're probably not going to want to use a drop down menu to run a message box macro. Most likely you're going to want to change something within the worksheet environment. I just did the message box because it's kind of neat and it's very easy to see what's happening. So that's how you can have a drop down menu run macros in Microsoft Excel. Now the VBA part is kind of complicated if you don't know VBA or you're not good at it. Um, but just go ahead and go to teachexcel.com and download the workbook and you can get all the code there. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial and I'm going to go ahead and leave it up on the macro code just so you can view that. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. That's pretty much it.